Hall of Fame broadcaster Marty Brenneman here, and he's the best storyteller in the game, and it's time to sit back, relax, and have some laughs. Welcome to the mayor's office, and here's your host, Sean Casey. Bam, Chichi. Back at it, man. <laughs> I was Jeez. just getting dressed. I got caught. I'm so excited. <laughs> We're doing something that I don't think anybody's ever done ever before. Nah, no, this us. is gonna be this is gonna be a good one. New one for the mayor's office, too. We're uh we're bringing in one of our favorite umpires today, probably one of the greatest umpires in Major League Baseball history, a dear friend of mine. He's worked three all-star games, five league championships, ten division series, five world series, and and you know, when you go back and look at at uh at John Hirschbeck's career, man, 34 years as an ump, but has has really umped some really, really historic games. Yeah. And uh, you know we're going to get into that. So let's let's bring him in. He's down there in Florida. Let's bring in my man John Hirsch back. What's up, Hirsch? John, how are you doing, buddy? Great oh, to man. see you. Great and you are see- likewise one of my favorite ball players of all time, and definitely one of my favorite people of all time. Oh man, I, nice. Hirsch, I appreciate that. I, I, was I mean telling, that with all my heart, dude. Thank you so much, man. I, I was telling Chinch that you know it's funny because you know playing first base. You know, and, and probably me being so talkative, you know, I really got a chance <laughs> no. to know. <laughs> yes. I, I really got a chance to know so many umpires, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and it almost became like, you know, and and the relationship that we had together, you know, you lived down in Sarasota. You were, you know, you and your brother Mark were always doing the game. So when I was with the Reds right. and I was with the Pirates, you know, I feel like I always saw you in extra you all month. the time. Yeah. Yep, all the time. <laughs> So it was great, man. So Hirsch, how you doing, man? How's retirement? 2016, your last year. How's retirement been? You and Denise, it looks like you guys are enjoying yourselves. Sean, I absolutely love it. And people always say to me like, oh, do you miss the game? And I said, you know what? I thank God every day because everything I have in life is from my 41 years in baseball, counting the seven in the minors. And everything I have is because of it. But when I left after game seven in 16. You know, I was 21 when I started, 62 when I finished, and I said, thank you, Lord, but I'm done. So I've never missed it for a second since. Wow, man. Just living the dream now, retirement. I hunt, I fish, I golf, <laughs> do whatever Denise tells me. Well, that's, it's always, that's always been that way, Hirsch. You know, it's all, all those I know, I know. <laughs> that part, yes. That part. <laughs> I say it last, it should be first. <laughs> well, you talk about your last game because it's obviously one of the greatest World Series ever with with you know implications that were huge because of the cubs obviously hadn't won in i don't know 90 i can't remember 80 90 some years long time, long time you know the, the, you know the curse and everything but you were there for game seven you were you were the crew chief for that 2016 world series what do you remember about that man could you take us back to that game seven and what you oh, remember wow. about it yes um i remember there was a runner on first and um i was in the middle of the infield hands on my knees, and who was it to hit the home run for Cleveland? The shot. Oh, yeah. Rajay da- Roger Davis. Rajay Davis. Yeah. And I literally, I mean, can I say shit on this show? Yeah, you could say I, shit. We you welcome want. it. We welcome it. <laughs> I was, my hands are on my knees, and I just turned. I went, holy shit. And <laughs> that, about that loud. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was an unbelievable game, unbelievable World Series, and, um, you know, very honored. My first World Series was Cleveland and Atlanta. Um, back when you were about 12, Sean, right? In 95? <laughs> 95, yeah. Just gotten drafted. I was 21. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and my last one was Cleveland, Chicago. And it was just a, it was a great experience. And people, one thing they, they always bring up is the 17-minute <laughs> rating delay that we had. And um, they're like, why'd you do that? And, you know, nowadays, it's not like I knew what weather was coming in. Because, but the, yeah. the groundskeepers and the technology is so good. And I've worked with that kid for you know, 34 years. And um, he just said, you know, he's like, Hirsch, it's going to start. It's going to, when it comes, it's going to hit really, really hard. And it's going to be like that for a few minutes. We can't play through it. And then it's going to clear out. And then the next bound of rain was in Toledo. So I knew we had like 45 minutes maybe. And um, so I had told both managers, I said, we're going to get out real quick. Just bear with me. I, 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 I hope I know what I'm doing here. So we covered it and then we were back out in 17 minutes and I thank God it didn't go more than 10 innings because, um, you know, I got home, Denise and I got home in Youngstown area at quarter to six that morning. Yeah. We were having a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Celebrating. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, um, you know, it was still raining well into the morning. So 
when people think beyond that, what would have happened if we had to pull him off the field and, oh. you know, game seven extra innings, that would have not have been as good an ending as it was, whether you're an Indians fan or a right. Cubs fan. Yeah. Well, you, you nailed, you nailed it. I mean, I, I know, I know that must've been, that must've been tough to like make that call, but I guess, you know, as the crew chief, you got to do what's you best. You got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Yeah. What's best yeah. for the game. What's best. Yeah. For you. And, and the big thing is you don't want some shortstop going for a ground ball, like a routine ground ball and he slips, he slides or, you know, makes an errant throw. And it's because of the weather that decides a world series. Yeah. That was yeah. my biggest, especially that world you know, series. On the Cubs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the Indians wanted it just as bad. You know, that was huge. Yeah. I was, I was, we were there Hirsch and that was that place. Almost, when Rajay hit that Homer off a oh, Chapman, was, that place almost came down. I mean, it was as loud it, as it was the stadium exciting. I've ever heard. Yeah. It was exciting. Yeah. What about you, man? Like, I know for me, my last year in 2008, um, I uh, was in the in the postseason with the, with the um, with the uh, Red Sox game seven ALCS. While I was sitting there and the, as the game was winding down, I remember thinking to myself, this is it for me. Like I knew I knew yeah. I was done. You know, I knew like, man, I, I've been in the game. Since, I've been drafted in 95. Obviously, as an umpire, you were in it for 34 years. I was in it for 14 and a half or something. But I knew I was. I knew I was done. Can you take us back to that? What, what you were thinking that like, during that game, like towards the end, did you ever sit in that and say, man, this is, you know, this is, this is going to be it for me. I, again, I, not to be overly religious, but I, I just kept thinking like, God, I've been blessed in my life, yeah. you know, and it wasn't a down feeling. It was a very up feeling because I was ready to get on, you know, with the next phase. So, so to speak of my life. And I had, I was actually going to retire two years earlier and, um, that's the year Michael passed away in April. Yeah. And, and then two weeks later, I was home because of that. And I fell on our back patio and I actually tore the quad completely off my kneecap. Oh, and when God. it did, half the kneecap came up with it. And oh. you talk about God working in strange ways, but that put me out for the season. And I was not ready after Michael passing to go back to work. And, um, so Joe Torre called me one one day after my 90 days because it was an off-field injury. And he's, he's like, Hirsch, listen, I got a couple propositions for you. He said, I heard you're going to retire. He said, and if you do, we'll pay you till January. And then you retire. He said, or you don't want to come back, but you don't want to retire. And he said, then we're going to stop paying you now. In January, you do what you want to do. And he said, number three, you could come to New York, do replay for a week, go home and see Denise for a couple of days, come back. And he said, we'll rehab you at NYU. And so that's what I did. And it was the best rehab. I mean, wow. it, it, it was fantastic. So I finished the year. And then when, when um, that was 15, when 16 came, I'm like, I'm going to be 62 at the end of the year. Why not do one more year and um, max out all my benefits and that kind of thing. So that's how I ended up till 16. But I was, I was ready. The, the last two years, you know, I was just ready. Talk about a blessing, Hirsch, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm going here now. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I, this, the conversation is taking us there, but um, you know, Michael was, uh, was, was such a, I mean, that's choking me up a little bit. Like yeah. just having all those years with him in Sarasota, he was just such a wonderful kid. Just one, yeah. just a wonderful, wonderful kid. And, you know, obviously the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And like, I used to love when he would come bat boy and like case, Hey, Michael's going to bat boy. You got him. I'm like, yeah, I got him Hirsch, you know? And he'd be like, all right, <laughs> yeah. Michael, you know, we're busting Michael's chops. He's kind of, yeah. you know, he was always busting our chops. I remember I'd like punch out. He'd be like, Hey, I swear you missed that one pretty good. Right. I'm like, are you serious <laughs> from the stuff? You can't yeah. be, able to, you know, and he was just such a good guy. And, and I, I think, you know, you, 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 you talk about, you have the magic of Michael foundation now. Uh, and, and, you know, he had passed away, like you said, in 2014. Um, but I think, uh, you know, when I look back at Michael and you were just what you were just saying, you had so many you felt so blessed in your career. Can you look back at that time with Michael and the and the, and all the experiences he got because of I mean, you and Major League Baseball? I mean, it, the some of the stories he was telling, you're like, dude, you've had better experience than probably most big league players. It was un unbelievable, Sean. And, and just the fact, you know. Michael had a lot of disabilities and you knew him very, very well. And we're so good to him. People that watch this and listen to, you know, the kind of person you are and you, you let that out on my son, which I'll forever be grateful for. But he, with his disabilities, he, he wasn't, he would never 
have been able to die when he was 27. Couldn't drive a car, couldn't do a lot of different things. But the one place he was most at home was, was around the ballpark and around you guys. And a lot of people would be intimidated to be in a locker room or be around, but he felt he knew his manners. And I would always say, don't you ever ask for an autograph. Don't you ask for anything. You shake their hands, you know, you'd be a gentleman. And um, he was right at home. And I mean, from little stories where uh, John Oates once was the Texas Rangers were in Sarasota playing and Michael had a seizure in their dugout and it was the ninth inning and I had the plate and I looked over and John said, it's okay. I got him. And I look over my son is laying on the bench with his head on John Oates's lap. Oh, you know, he's God. consoling him. And um, just, just the, the memories, I mean, of doing working with the Yankees and all, all the spring training games. I have a picture here in, in the office and it's a little picture of Michael and I, and I, I, it was the first time it was down in Fort Myers when the Cardinals were there and Tony La Russa put him on the field and he's in a Cardinals t-shirt and a twins batting helmet. And um, he had to be six years old, seven years old. And, you know, until he was 27. So he knew his way around the big leagues a little bit. And every <laughs> spring training game here with me, I mean, he would never, ever, ever miss the game. Never. Never. I know. I was, uh, whenever I'd see you, I'm like, all right, Michael's around here somewhere. And sometimes yeah. he'd do the, the other dugouts. Sometimes yeah. he'd do our dugouts, but I, you know, cherish those years with him, man. And, and, uh, yeah. I'm just very grateful. He was a blessing to so many different people, Hirsch, yeah. you know, just and so that's many why players. I feel so blessed, you know, and, yeah. and it's the game of baseball and that's, he loved, loved, loved baseball. And it just happened that his father happened to be a major league umpire. <laughs> So, so great. Had some opportunities, you know. <laughs> no, man. So, oh, it's yeah. so wonderful. You know, staying in your staying in your family, Hirsch, uh, you know, Mark, your brother, it was just kind of great. I got to know Mark really well too over the years. I believe he I can't believe he retired. I think it was 2003, right? Is he he had a hip hip surgery? Hip surgery that went bad. Yes. Yeah. So what was that? What was that like for you and your brother to be what in was, the big leagues together? See, back then it was really neat because um I was in the big leagues, I don't know, quite several years before he was. But then once he got, he was National League, I was American League. Then in 2000, the leagues joined. So we were both major league umpires. Um, so I wouldn't get to see him during the season at all until spring training. So we, we would have a ball, you know, working spring training games together. And, um, you know, back then guys would swing. It was like, how quick can we get out of here? Today? <laughs> <That> first <laughs> pitch swing again. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, and nowadays it's so everything oh. we can talk about that but everything about the game is so different i mean they're trying to get big time at bats in spring training i mean and pitching it's like they just the, everything is so important because of the almighty dollar i guess but right it's just a different different game yeah yeah what, what, the, the, stay there Hirsch. like what, what 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 is it about the game i mean obviously you play you were in the you were in the 80s the 90s 2000 you know, all the way until 2016 like you have really seen it all 34 years in the game you know, what is the difference now of the game and, and what are some of the things you like about it? And maybe some of the things you're like, man, I, I don't, I don't really agree with that. Well, talking like a 67 year old guy, <laughs> I think part of it is this, um, the feeling of young people nowadays of self entitlement and respect. Um, you know, young guys used to have so much respect for the older guys. They would sit and listen to a Cal Ripken after a game, drinking beer and sit in the locker room until Cal wanted to go home. And it was like that with, a, with many, many teams. And they want to listen and learn and talk about the game. And now they're, they're on their iPads and their phones and they're showered. So before we even get our equipment off, they're out of the ballpark. And um, moving on with that, I think it's money in the game. You know, every pitch. There were times when if someone came in, it was 10-2, they would just throw if someone hit a home run, okay, let's go. And now every pitch means something to that pitcher in his pocketbook. Every at-bat means something to a hitter. Right. And I think money, between money and the lawyers, they've, you know, in my opinion, right. have made the game go downwards rather than upwards. Yeah. What, what about, you know, as – as far as that goes too, I think that technology has entered the game too in a different way Yeah, where you're like, man, what's going on here? So like you obviously were a big part of replay. Uh, mm -hmm. You were there when it was really kind of, when it was getting going, just getting started. Yeah. Just getting yeah. started. So like do you en think enough, to, enough to taste it, enough to taste it. Yeah. Right. Right. So do you think replay is a good thing? And also um, the thing that I don't really love that they're talking about is, Hey, one of these days we're going to have robo uh, umpires. Yeah, it's not that far off. 
Are you, you think that you, I don't you think, think we're going to see that? Well, from what I read and what I hear from umpires that are friends of mine still in the game, I don't think it's that far off. Or they're talking about it not being that far off. Yeah. Um, so um, I, you know, it's a shame. It really is because umpire, it's not the same. You know, when I, when I went to umpire school, when I was coming up through the minor leagues, it was um, the, if people said, well, what's the difference between a triple A umpire and a big league umpire? And it was always, my answer was how you handle people and how you handle situations. Um, ball strike safe out. Everybody could pretty much do their job or you wouldn't have gotten a triple A, let alone right. the big leagues. And um, nowadays you don't have to handle people you have to handle situations. If there's a bang, bang play, you say, excuse me, let me just we'll, we'll check. We'll get the replay and find out. <laughs> right. Check it um, out. <laughs> but getting back to your question, Sean, I think the idea of replay was a good thing. And I, I mentioned like a game, Jim Joyce's game, where he missed that play with Galarraga. Right. Yes. If you could have it to right the egregious, egregious wrongs, then I think it would be good. But I'll never forget when it started. I said, look out, because it's going to be like a drug for the owners. They're going to want more and more and more and more. And that's from 2000 now when they started tracking our pitches and giving us scores to, you know, it went from if you were honest with yourself and you looked in the mirror, you know, if you had a good game or not. Right. And there were times I said, you didn't see the ball well tonight. You didn't, you weren't consistent. You didn't have a good game, but now you have to wait till the next morning and go on your laptop and see what your score was. Right. Even though you think, Hey, I had a really good game last night. Um, right. You know, I've heard of guys working no hitters and they come the next day and they, they're like at 90, 92 percentile. Wow. Doesn't wow. make sense. <laughs> it's wow. a perfect game. Look, I have one quick question in in, in this. There's also the rule changes. I remember, I, Sean, we didn't talk about this before, but it just popped in my head. Remember the second base, the the transfer, and all That's that. Such a great example. Okay, yeah. Like, what are you got? What was your guys taking? Like, wait, hold on. We got We got to. We got to ump games differently. And, and and how did you guys? Oh, yeah. navigate it. It was tough. It was tough. And how about um, when uh, what's his name for San Francisco? The catcher got. Got blown over. See, Posey. Posey, Posey, yeah, the place of play. Bust, bust, Buster Posey. So they changed the entire slide rule at home plate. You know, it used to be going back now. Um, no one wanted their shortstops or second baseman to get hurt. So what we learned at umpire school: if the throw is there, if it's on the money, and they give you like a, just a good turn. You know, if they touch the base a little before, a little after, it's, and and the guy's still four feet off the bag, that's okay. They don't want to get their guy hurt. So we let that happen. Then when replay came in, it's like, oh, wait a minute. He didn't have the bag at that exact second. So now you got to start making him stay on the bag. Right. And, um, you know, and, and the catcher, I know it's a big money position now, but, you know, that was a catcher was the tough guy. I mean, the yeah. real tough guy. You want to plow me over? Come on, try it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, because one big money guy gets hurt, then they change again, lawyers. Lawyers. Yeah, lawyers. Yeah, yeah, lawyers. right, right, right. Well, yeah. I think because because it, it was Buster Posey, you know, he's a face exactly. of baseball. Oh, Good yeah, young young kid. I think yep. that changed. He missed a year. He missed yeah. a year, and yeah, we don't there was some backup, some some backup catcher in Kansas City. You're like, hey, let's just keep crushing yeah, guys. You know what I mean? But I but I I know when that happened. I know catchers were like, we like that. We liked the, the collision. Oh, yeah. at the plate. We, oh, yeah. Catchers used now, to like that. You know. And nowadays, you know what you say to your child. If you don't want to get hit like that, go play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Dude, play golf or tennis if you don't want to get brought right. over. You know what I mean? It's right. true. It's true. The other thing hurts about replay that drives me crazy is I can't stand when you got a guy, Mike Trout, slides into second base. Bam, he's safe. And all of a sudden, you know, he's coming over the base and his feet are off it and his body's just off it, but it's then his feet are on it. And, and the replay shows, oh, look. At point one seconds there, he's off the base, and you have to call him out. Do you do you think that's crazy? Did hey, I do? Sean, Sean, here's a good story. Houston was in Anaheim, okay? Albert Pujols, I'm at second base. The ball gets away from the catcher. You know how he kind of trots back? Because you know Albert's not going beyond second. Yeah, right. Okay? So he, he gets it, and he kind of tosses it down to second base. Everything is half-heartedly. So Albert gives, like, a customary slide in, and he pops up. I don't even think I said safe. You know, right. it was like that. So obvious. obvious. Like I just started, you know, and next thing I know, the Houston manager is, um, is saying, check the replay, check the replay. I'm like, are they serious? So as I'm walking the home plate in Anaheim, you have to go back there behind the screen. And I'm, right. I'm walking by John Tumpane. 
right? He's the plate umpire. And he was a young guy. He was on my crew. It wasn't in the big leagues yet. I'm, Tump, if I miss this, I will kiss your ass. <laughs> so I, I walk back and they tell me he came off the bag like an inch. So he's out. So as I'm walking back by him, he goes, hey, chief, you want to do it now or after the game? <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. That's so great. That's so great. Talk about characters of the game too. Like I always, I always love that, you know, there were so many different, so many different personalities of umpires. You know what I mean? Like I'm not having the same conversation with you as maybe I'm having with Joe West or I'm having yeah. with, you know I mean, oh, different yeah. guys, you know, there's, you guys all had different personalities and different strike, different strike zones. I want to stay on the strike zone really quick because mm-hmm. when I first came up in the big leagues in 98, it was still NL AL umps. Right. And right. And then all of a sudden it became one universal umpiring crew. But also, too, I used to love like, you know, the different strike zones. Like if you were behind the dish or your brother was behind the dish, you had to make maybe you were calling that day uh, inch outside. So I would know, hey, listen, I got to cover that today because Hirsch mm-hmm. is giving me up. But he's but he's a ball out. Right. Or right. I, you know, or I go to like. You but know, I try to be that way every day. So it wasn't like day. he just knew, oh, Hirschbeck's got the plate today. So we know. Get, make sure you don't look yes. at that outside corner pitch. And yes, so we wouldn't we would on. know that as players. But right. all of a sudden now, it's like like you said, robots. It's robots. Like oh, so there's you know there's no you're not looking at the umpire saying okay, I know Bruce yeah. Froming's at in the dish and I got to really buckle up because he's ten feet behind. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, what do you what do you think of that? As what did all our fathers teach us from when we were like seven years old and starting in little league? If it's with close strikes, swing, if it's, if close, it's swing. close with two strikes swing, yeah, you don't right. want to get called out looking. And right. now that ship sailed. Right. <laughs> yeah, could Tom it's Glavin? Not. Could Tom Glavin do what he did back then? Now, with no, the t- <laughs> no, no chance. Maddox, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when I looked at the USA today, the day before, and I saw that those guys, I had the plate the next day and they were pitching, I'd be like, oh, baby, we're going to have some fun tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, it just made my day because, you know, they weren't going to be in for four or five innings. They're going to be there at least seven. Yeah. Yeah. You know? is, it, Hirsch, is Now, is that tough for you? Like now in this game, and age, in this day and age, guys aren't going three times through the lineup. They're going five – five innings, six innings, you know, they're coming out. Oh, and yeah. then you might get five, you might get four to six pitchers for the rest of that game, right? And they wonder and why out. the games are long. And they wonder, they wonder why, why the they... games are long. And the game's long. As an umpire, though, visually, is that tough? No, because the worst thing you can do as an umpire is anticipate the pitch that's coming. Perfect example is a knuckleball pitcher. You don't know where that pitch is until the last, you know, the the, the 12 inches across home or 24 inches across home plate. You have to wait. And it's the same thing when Randy Johnson's throwing or whoever it is that you can't make up your mind. You've got to wait until the ball hits the glove and then mentally say, okay, what was it? And that's timing because you don't want to be too quick because you'll call it and you might get a a Randy Johnson cutter that's down in the dirt and you're saying strike. So it's all a a good plate umpire has excellent timing. Wow. That's so cool. it's almost as I mean, I almost feel like you're, 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 you could be talking hitting or umpiring, you know what I mean? Same kind of thing with as a hitter. I was yeah. trying to wait till that last moment, you know, Correct. if I'm facing Maddox, I got to wait till that sinker sinks. I got to wait and see what the changeups fading, um, you know, and so I, I, I understand the vision. Hirsch, you guys coming up, you know, as an umpire and you I know you you help out with the school of umpiring and everything like that. It, what is that? What you're teaching? Are you? Is that one of the biggest parts of being, especially a home plate umpire, is how to really wait, how to how to really use your vision? I, Sean, I don't teach anymore. It's been a while. I was an instructor when I was younger for ten years at, in Wendell Stats Umpire School, but it was the same all through then. But I, nowadays, I I just don't know. I think you still have to teach them to wait. That that's like a necessity. That'd be like teaching the basics of of fielding a ground ball. That doesn't change. Um, the philosophies. See, I could, I could, if someone could shoot me through the screen, they, they might right now, but the philosophy that we were taught that the, the late great Marty Springstead, whom I loved, I worked with him in the big leagues and it became my boss um, b- till he passed away. But we went out there with the attitude like, okay, I knew the starting pitcher is going to be maybe or whatever, you know, he's just getting ready. I want him to get settled in. And I'd be looking for strikes. I try and get them ahead, like strike one, get them ahead on the board. And, 
people in the game heard that nowadays. They'd say, well, you, you, you cheated or whatever they want to say. It doesn't <laughs> right. matter. I did well at what I did. But right. you, you just uh, want to get the game moving. Call strikes. Get them swinging. How many times I said to somebody, like, they go, well, that pitch is off the plate. I said, you have a bat in your hands. You're not going to make money. <laughs> Look, boom, ball four, okay? Hit it. I mean. <laughs> so. That's true. That's true. No, it's the game. And again, I'm, I'm old. The game has changed. And um, I go back to what I said. I, I thank God that my career was when it was and ended when it ended. And- what, if, what about catchers, Hirsch? You know, because like – you 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 obviously see a guy like Molina, or you see like you know guys that are you know Pudge, guys that were good catchers. You know, th- th- was there certain catchers that you really like to work that you're like, man, I, oh, when we're playing the Cardinals, oh man, Molina's buying a dish. Yes, I mean, can you give Don't us care a few who's names? Pitching, they, yeah. yes, and you just mentioned the ones from when you played, and I'll go back to the best I ever worked behind, ever by far, Bob Boone. Bob Boone, no way. Bob Boone, yes, sir. I mean, see, back then, catchers received the ball. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they catch the ball. All they're trying to do is get a glove on it and catch it. Bob Boone used to take his hand and just, slight, as he caught the ball, slightly turn it. So it wasn't out there. It was here. And he was like a magician. Carlton Fisk was that way. And um, there's a story I just told recently. Sal Fasano. You yeah, remember him? Sal. Oh, I love Sal, Sal yeah. Fasano. Yes. Great mustache. Okay. Yeah, Sal Fasano, and I think he's coaching now, last I heard. I haven't been in touch with yeah. him, but um, Sal Fasano, we were in Oakland one day, and I said, you know what, Sal? You really received the ball well. I said, I'm going to give you the ultimate compliment I could ever give somebody. You remind me of Bob Boone. And he stood up, turned around, and he goes, Hirsch, that's who taught me to catch. What? you got to be kidding me. Wow. True story. That's awesome. True story. That is crazy. Wow, awesome. that yep. is so great. So Sal Fasano was a modern, modern era, uh, you know, for me into two thousands that, you know, when, when he was, when he was catching, you just, you'd love it because you knew you were going to have a good game. You knew you are going to yeah. see the ball. Well, he's going to receive the ball. Well, and nowadays you watch, they just knock them down because <laughs> I mean, it's all just yeah. throw as hard as you can. Tommy John came in the locker room once in New York years ago. And, um, and, he said the difference between a pitcher, he said, if I want to throw that ball three inches outside and I'm practicing and learning, he said, I want to be able to do that four times in a row, same spot that I know where I can put it every time. And nowadays, if you said that to a pitcher, they'd be like, "Uh, uh-uh. just let me throw back and knock the catcher. Over. Yeah, 119 yeah. Miles uh, an again, it's not, it's not pitching. It's throwing. Yeah. Yeah. What about a guy when you when you talk about that? I'm, I'm just, my mind's starting to go to some, to some um, different pitchers. What about Nolan Ryan? Were you behind the dish for Nolan Ryan? Could you tell us what many, that was like? What that was like? Many times, many times, many times. Um, <laughs> good person, great guy. But as he got to the end of his career, it's funny because he would just let it go and go. Ugh! <laughs> and then and then he just thought it was a strike from the second it left. It was a little unfair because he thought everything should be a strike. <laughs> and he did stuff like nowadays that if they did it, there'd be a riot. I mean, if, if a young kid got a base hit off him, he'd go to the back, back of the mound and just stare at the kid for a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah. Swear to God, Sean, I swear to God, he would just stare at the kid for a couple seconds. Like, excuse me, you did, you just got a hit. You had the audacity to get a hit off me. <laughs> That's so great. Was so, like I, I heard so many stories about Nolan about that stuff. Just the intimidation factor. Like, if you squared the bunt, next pitch was like, oh yeah, no doubt, up and in. You know, oh, and, yeah. and buzzing your tower. Oh yeah, like that part of the game too, Hirsch has changed so much. I mean, I think when I first came to the big leagues in 97, 98, you know, you could still pitch in, you could still send a message. You could still knock a guy down. It seems like now in the game, if you, if you knock a guy down or you come in, bam, the warnings come out. out. The warnings come out quickly. Now, is that taught to you guys as umpires? Hey, listen, if guys are pitching in or, or, you know, bam, we got to get the warnings out right away. Remember earlier in our conversation, how I said um, handling people, handling yeah. situations. The big part about when you, when you went in and you knew that there was something going on or, or from the night before that you had been there um, and you let that happen. A lot of time, our thinking was now, if, if someone granted, if somebody drills, somebody 
shoulders and up like a dangerous in the head. If he hits him in the back um, and if the guy deserved it, you let him do it. <laughs> right. Okay. And then if they answer, you say, okay, now it's done. You're all even up. You're done. Yes. Yeah. The next time I'm going to run somebody cut the shit right now. Right. And that's kind of how we handle it. And it worked for years. We let, we let the players police themselves. Yeah. And, and now it's yeah. just another duty of the umpires to police the players along with the slides a second, along with the visits to the mound. I mean, they have to go out with a scorecard in their pockets and keep <laughs> track of how many visits are going to the mound because there's limits. Yeah. You know, it used to be just two and you're done. I mean, now it's, yeah. you know, and under certain situations where they can go or not go, it's just. And what, what do you thinking. what what do you think of now? I think it's it's I mean it's getting ridiculous. But now the the you know the pitcher comes off the mound and the umpire's got to go. Hey, let me check your, let me oh, see if yeah. you got oh, Vaseline or Bardol yeah. or you know whatever you know yeah. ready to and, go. And then when that happened, I said, as soon as that happens, any experienced manager at the next inning, he's going to say, go check his glove, right? Which exactly. is what they started yeah. doing. And then now the umpires are checking them all the time on and off the field. Like really, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, another yeah, thing no, slowing know. the game and, down. And we used to have the attitude like, w- "What you're doing, unless they bring it up, it's none of my business." Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and again, people hear that and they say, "Well, this guy's you know drooling my cereal in the morning." But <laughs> that's how it was back then. I mean, you know, I know we didn't look for trouble. If and I used to tell guys, even to the end of my career, you never on my crew don't look for trouble because enough will find us. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> a great. That's great in life. That's a great thing in life. Yeah. <laughs> and so much of it is. <laughs> So true. Yeah. What about I was we were talking before about Joe West. I mean, I lo- I I I I always enjoyed Joe. You know what I mean? Like, and the one thing I loved about Joe is, as old school was, you know, as soon as if I a young pitcher was on the mound and he kind of gave up, where's that pitch? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. yes. I'm like, yeah. I am <laughs> the strike zone just went, Boop, you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. like, because Joe had a great strike zone and it was tight, yeah. but it would get even tighter <laughs> if the pitcher, you know, oh, yeah. would, would do something he didn't like. Can you tell us, man, all of us, you know, I, I that you know him so well. What, what is he like? Is he angry Joe West? Is he cowboy Joe West? Is he like, what's, what's I, Joe I, like? I do. And actually, I had the honor of my last World Series of being partners with him. Um, wow. He was, he is such a good man, a good person, very kind person. Um, we were talking about Michael earlier, you know, he, he couldn't have, when, when Michael was around him, he couldn't have done enough things for Michael um, and my wife and my daughters, you know, just Joe, Joe is a good, good person. He's old school. Um, and I say, God bless him for that. And I'm, I'm glad now he, he did retire. I heard. And um, you know, I hope he has a long life to enjoy his retirement enjoys it and enjoys it as much as I do. I know he loves playing golf and he lives in Orlando. So oh, he'll, he'll be play doing a lot a of golf. golf. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be doing uh, a lot. Joe's Joe's a good person. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want to go, I want to go to managers. Cause you know, I think the game really misses the ejections of managers. You know what I mean? Cause now it's like, Hey, check the replay. You can't come out. Yeah. How you know? do you get ejected now? Maybe over pitches or check swings. That's right. it. Right. You, it's like, but I, I think part of the game that fans love, even the players we'd love when the oh, bam, yeah. there goes, there goes Leland. He's going after Hirschbeck and it's mm-hmm. on, you know what I mean? Like, and sometimes you know, I'd look over and you guys would be like giggling in the dug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We used to, we used to love it. It was fun. Yeah, How much yeah. fun? We had fun back then, you know? Yeah, it was so fun. And we'd be like, oh, man. And I'm like, if he says one more thing to her, she's going to get run. And bam, there yeah. he goes. And, you yeah. know, it's crazy. Who were some of the, can you remember some of your best ejections and, and, and some of the best character umpires that you're like, I mean, I'm, I'm character manager. You're like, oh, man, this is going to be, this is going to be a good one. Well, when I started, I had Billy Martin. Billy never said a uh. word to me. And he was like, he was like uh, a wild animal. He would go after the weak. <laughs> like if there's four guys, he would pick who he thought was the weakest one. And that would be his project for the three days. <laughs> um, I had Earl Weaver, threw him out a couple times, but nothing ever that big. Now, Lou Pinella, we all know, is one of the biggest characters ever. Ever, yeah. And I, don't, yeah, I had him as a player, the Yankees. And then I had him for many years as a manager. Oh, yeah. And I never ever had a foul word he and I but one night I'm in Seattle and uh, a partner one of my partners at first base misses a play right. before replay or anything and Luke comes out and he's doing a Lou Pinella going crazy he threw his hat threw first base out into right field <laughs> and as a crew chief I kept trying to get between them 
And he kept saying, Hirsch, get out of my way. I'm he go around me and he start again. So finally <laughs> I worked my, I worked my way back in between them. And I said, Lou, listen to me. You know what your wife is going to say when she sees the way you're acting. On TV. <laughs> he goes, damn, you're right. And he turns around and walks in the dugout. <laughs> so after the game, after the game, we, uh, we come in and the TV, our clubhouse guy has the game on. They're, they're interviewing Lou in, in, his, in his office. And they said, what made you turn around when Hirschbeck came in there and go right in the dugout? He said, he just reminded me how much of an asshole I was being and what my <laughs> wife was going to do to me when I get home tonight. <laughs> that's so great. You can't make that shit up. That's so great. Man. That's, that's the stuff that you don't, you know, you never hear, you know, and, and yeah. those are the stories. That, oh, that was so great. We yeah. always say, you know, guys always say, especially for you, Hirsch, man, 34 years in the game. You know, and 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 I remember Leland saying, you know what, Case, I've been in this game, whatever, 50 years, and I never seen that happen before. I never seen that happen before. You know, it's like oh, yeah. you know, always can you remember some of the craziest things you've ever seen, like that you've been a part of? Or is there, is there one or two things that stand out? You're like, boy, I, I can't believe that I that happened. God. This is this is one I'd have to give a few minutes thought, but can I tell you one more good manager story? Yes, please oh do. yeah, please. 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 Okay, please. okay. Ron Garden hire. And my son, Michael, were like this. Right. OK, they were on each other's speed dial. And at night, I'd be like if I, you know, when I was home, the, Michael's door was shut. And I don't know if he was on, sometimes on the phone to like Merrill Lynch because he always wanted to like keep track of his money and he had more money. And otherwise, he was talking to like Ron Garden High or something like that. <laughs> oh so God. one time we're in Minnesota and I'm at second base and Michael was not with me on this trip. So um, there was a short fly ball into left field. So the umpire at third goes out. It was catch, no catch. And look, I, I don't know because I was in the middle of the infield watching other things. So Garden Hire comes out, running out to left field to, to argue. And he, he says, John, I'm going to have to get run on this one. So he goes out there and he's putting on a little bit of a show and the umpire doesn't run him. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm like, OK, so now as he comes back, he said, he said, he won't run me. I, you're going to have to run me. I said, Ron, Michael's at home watching this game. If I throw you out, I said, <laughs> you know what he's going to say or how he's going to feel. Why did you throw Mr. Garden higher out? Guardy, he called him. Why did you throw Guardy out of a game? I said, so I'm not doing it. And he goes, well, you're a bleep bleep. I said, <laughs> OK, that'll do it. So he turns around. I go, what are you going to do now? He said, I'm going to my office and I'm going to tell Michael just what you did to me. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Uh, so I threw my arms up. I said, I can't win. Oh my God. That's so great. That's so great. Hirsch. Yeah. Oh, dude. So you, you have been a part of some unbelievable games. I mean, I, I just go down the list of a couple of them. I'd like a, to touch with them. Um, you were the first base sump on David Wells perfect game. In yes. 98. Is that, is that right? Yes. What was that like? I know you weren't behind the dish, but, but just being a perfect games, that, that's, that, that's a very rare thing to in see. Yankee in Yankee stadium baseball. on a hot and, yeah, Sunday yeah. afternoon. I, all I kept saying was dear, dear God, Oh John, please don't miss a play. Don't <laughs> mess funny. this up. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's all. And when the last out was made, I might've been as happy as David. Cause you know, um, Fine. well, you'll probably get the holidays, no hitter in the playoffs. But you just you don't want I, I know that people do not go to the ballpark to see me and I don't want to be seen. Right. I just want to do my job and go home. T take us there. The, uh, that's where I was going next. The Roy Halladay, okay. no hitter, okay. 2010 Reds, NLDS, I believe. What yep. is that like? Because I know for a player, you know, I was part of Justin Verlander's first no hitter and like. You know, it get, the nerves get going. You know, oh, I know for yeah. I know for me, I'm you don't like, want to be the one. You don't want to mess up I yes. mean, for him. You do right. not want to. Yeah. You, and you want to make a diving player or whatever. What's that like being an umpire in that as game? an umpire? Same thing. I just I, it was around. It was it was the fifth inning when I looked up and I saw I'm like, holy shit, they don't have any hits off them, meaning the Reds. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, um, you've seen the ball. Well, you have good timing. Just keep doing what you're doing. OK, so the end of the sixth. And then there, here's something I don't tell that often. <laughs> I don't have any superstitions, but right. Halliday, when um, he he was coming back onto the mound, for some reason I ended up with the ball. Maybe I went went and picked it up, and I would right. take the ball. And as he hops over the first baseline, I would flip it to the air to, in the air to him, and he'd catch it. <laughs> and so I did that for the last four. <laughs> <days>. <laughs> so 
but as it went seven, eight, and then, and then nine, I'm like, okay, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change the strike zone, you know, concentrate, don't just take your time, concentrate. And, um, and it got to the, uh, the last out of the game. And I don't know if you guys remember this. We just but talked it about it. Down the line. And I was ready to call interference. If they hadn't, if the first baseman hadn't reached up and caught the ball, so it was nothing. I would have called interference because the batter was out of the lane and definitely interfering. The catcher had to throw it high. So if that had gone over the first baseman's head, the last out of the game, I would have called him out. He still would have had no hitter, but it would have been on hitter batter's interference. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, and then that- the amazing thing is the next when I talk about concentration. Now the next night I'm in the right field line and um, second base, first base, you're watch games. That's how we kind of the right field. We'll meet up so we can BS between innings. Right, right. And I said to the other two umpires, I said, was it this loud last night? I mean, you, you couldn't hear each other standing, you know, two feet apart. They on it was a lot louder and I, I never heard it. You know what I mean? Wow, so you wow. talk about like being into the game and concentrating. Yeah. Right. You're just, you're just focused in it. Focused. Yeah, wow. Totally focused. That's amazing, man. I, yep. I, I still, uh, I still remember her, you know, talk about focusing and, and one of your games in 2006 uh, and when we were in the world series together, it was yep. so funny. Cause I remember I was, I just got traded to the pirates in 2006. You were obviously at all, all those games, in Bradenton. And I remember yep. what my first, Spring training game with the Pirates. You were at first base. We were talking. Hey, Eric, good to see you. How's Pittsburgh, Bob? You know, and I remember seven months later, I'm in Detroit now yep. in the World Series. I look over. I think it was game three or game four, and there you are. And we had the, one of the coolest conversations in my career. Yeah. I still tell the story all the time. I'm like, I look over at John Hirschbeck. He looks at me, and Hirsch goes, this is a little better than you being with the Pirates and, and me, me and you being in Bradenton at spring Bradenton training. Bradenton right? spring training. <laughs> hey, do you remember when we first met the very first time ever? No, I don't. In, I don't. You were in AAA with the Indians. Am I right? Yes. Okay. You remember how they would always, Mark, uh, Ron Shapiro is a good friend of mine and his son, Mark was your director yeah. of the minor and leagues. Ron, Ron was my agent. Ron was my agent. And Mark Correct. was, yes. Correct. So um, Mark would call me and I would go to Cleveland the winter. And like one week they bring in an agent to talk one week, they bring in an umpire and they'd have yes. all their prospects in Cleveland for like, what was it? A three week program or four week yes. program. Yep, yep. And that's when prospects. you came up after me and you talked to me. And that's when the first time we ever uh, met uh, Hirsch. I totally remember that. That is the first time we yep. met. That was an unbelievable program. They used yep. to bring guys in and they're like, it was hey, a great program. Great I don't know program. if other teams do it, but that was a long time ago, obviously. The, the, but. the Indians, Mark Shapiro and the Indians, they were ahead of their time. John Hart, and Dan O'Dowd, you know, I think yeah. that's all new stuff, but and they but have was- a lot of good Latin prospects and they would put them in homes with people. Yeah. And, you know, help them learn the English language. They would have English classes for them. And, yep. um, you know, even if they need remember dental work, different things, they would just take care of them and help to help their lives be better. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Prospect. You're right. They were ahead of the game. And I remember I stayed yeah. during that time. Remember Russell Brannion? Russell Brannion oh, and God, I, yeah. that winter development, we stayed together, like, you know, with uh, the Rosenblooms and like, I can't remember, but, I, you know, it's just so funny looking back. Yeah. And, Russ and I you know, drive I back, every day. It, it, you know what? And as, as way we were friends then, yeah. but, but we really didn't see each other together. And now that, you know, we're retired, you come to our golf outing, you come to our dinners and yeah. it's kind of nice with certain people that, that you can hang out with, you yeah. know, and you get to be really friends when you liked each other, but you'd like to say, come on, let's go have a beer. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now we can. <laughs> now we can. Yeah. You couldn't do it then. Like, right. Hey, do you see Hirschbeck and yeah. Casey out together last night? At the, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, let's at see the what his strike zone looks like <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. One of the ones that you were involved with, Hirsch, I believe you were behind the plate when Bonds hit 756. Yes. Am, am I right by saying that? Yes. What yes. was that like? That was in San Fran, right? What in was San that Fran. like? What was that it like? It was man? an absolute zoo. It was right. the second night. I think Bill Welke had the plate the first night and they would come in and they have all the balls numbered and everything. And you had to put them in your, and I carry two ball bags. You had to put them in. They had to go out and sequence and everything. it just, it was a, an ESPN were all over the place. I mean, right. no peace and quiet in the locker room. <laughs> so now the second night comes and, and I didn't care one way or another. I just want to get out of San Francisco. <laughs> and, um, and, but that at bat, he must have fouled off gosh knows how many pitches. And at one point during fouling off of all those pitches, I said, if he gets a decent pitch, he's going to do it right now. And he wow. did. Wow. 
Wow. He was, yep. he was that good. Like, I, I don't know. He was zoned in. Yeah. I mean, he had his bat on every pitch, even ones right. that are a little out of the strike zone, just falling off everything. It was unbelievable. Do you have yeah. – Hirsch, I'm interested because, dude, you're – like I said, I think you're the greatest umpire of all time. Do you well, have – Sean, do, that means a lot coming from well, you. I, that's a well, – because you know how much I love you, buddy. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate we, it. And we know as players, you know what I mean? We know who the good ones are and, and you were. Um, do you have an opinion on that? On 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 Bonds and Clemens not being in the Hall of Fame because you watched them all, you watched all these guys, you saw the generation, the steroid generation, whatever. Do you have an opinion on on those guys not being in the Hall of Fame? I do, and my personal opinion is that they should be in the Hall of Fame <clears throat> because back then, everyone in the game was doing that, and everyone in the game knew everyone was doing it. Right. Okay. And I'm talking everyone in the game. So, I, yes, I think that they should be allowed in the Hall of Fame. And there's a lot of things that go on and, and, you know, um, in life and a lot of things that you could go back and say, well, maybe that person shouldn't be there for this reason. But I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, That's I, just I, me. I, 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 I agree. And I also think, like, I remember somebody told me one time that the Hall of Fame, it's it's not the Holy land. It's the promised land. I almost feel like if you, if you really wanted to start breaking down certain people, there would be, you know, you, you may, you might not have a whole thing. You know exactly. what I mean? I, so. Exactly. You know, we could take it. If you watch now, um, I watch a lot of golf. Okay. Like on, on the weekends and stuff. And I love to play golf um, since I retired. Right. And <laughs> you, you see all the bets, they put it right up there on the thing. And MLB is, it's all betting. Now you see all right. these things about odds and betting right. on games and everything. So, I mean, maybe Pete Rose was before his time. I mean, right. you know, right. there's yeah. a time, there's a, a time in life to forgive people. Right. That's I agree. Move on. I agree. And move on. Yeah, exactly. Turn the page. Um, as far as the, all the umpires, in the history of the game, you know, obviously there's many before you and will be many after. Is there a Mount Rushmore of umpires? Like, do you guys get together and say, man, I want to be like that guy or boom, that guy was the best? No, 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 no sir. Um, I never did. I never had an idol. I never um, I had people that I admired because they were good people. Mm-hmm. Um and because if you're on the field, again, I talked earlier about being honest with yourself, whether or yeah. not you had a good plate job. If you're on the field, you know that any given day, you know, I don't know how many guys I know that retire and all of a sudden they think they never missed a pitch or never missed a play. You know, <laughs> right. I am, I am not one of those. I missed my share and anyone that worked with me knows that, but yeah. you know, I tried hard to do my best every day and I took yeah. it serious. I showed up for work. Um, so no, I never admired anybody other yeah. than looking up to them as a good person, a good family man. Yeah. Well, before I retired, I, you know, I was able to pick my crew for seven, my second 17 years, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, one of the bosses said to me, he said, you don't care who you get on your crew as far as umpires. He said, you just want good people. I said, that's right. Because whatever happens on the field, we will handle. Right. I just want off the field to be around good people. That's right, awesome. right. What, Hirsch, what is the – what is the toughest thing about being a major league baseball umpire? The travel, being away from home. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard job. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's, it's that travel and it's gotten worse, you know, since nine 11, it just gets worse and worse and worse all the time going through airports and, and look at these poor guys now having to deal with COVID the last two years, you know, and umpiring and being in seclusion and having to get their meals brought. It just, and, and, and look at our society nowadays. I, I told Denise last week, I said, could you imagine if being in Seattle, I used to enjoy, like, you know, my routine was I get up, have a big breakfast, go work out, and then maybe, you know, take, make some phone calls and then go out and walk around for a couple hours just to kill right. time. Well, would you like to walk around Seattle, Detroit, San Francisco, L.A., New York, Philadelphia? It's like, you know, society has just changed. So, yeah. I'm, it's so true. I'm glad I don't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, no. Yeah. When, when, can you explain the travel a little bit? Cause I know for, for us as players, we, the travel was hard on us, but we were home every other week. So it'd be like, Oh yeah. Hey, right. we got a road trip. We're, we're on, we're on the West coast for a week. We come home to Cincinnati. Then we go back out. What right. is, do you, you guys don't have a home base. No. Right? Umpires get four one week vacations during the season. Um, and, 
when you see like uh, the Reds are home for 10 days, well, my crew might go in for the first three days when you're playing the Dodgers. And then we leave and go somewhere else. And another crew comes in for the next series. So we're only, whether it's a, a three or four game series, we're only there for one series. And then we're up and out to the next city. And to get home, um, you have to have an off day. Now, my, my children were little. I would really try and get home on off days. And once they were grown, yeah. um, you know, I wouldn't go from Dallas home and then off day and then San Francisco. I would just go to San Francisco and take the off day, not kill right. myself. But right. when they were little, I sure as heck, you know, did just to see the children, my wow. wife. Yeah. What, what, what about what about the flights? Like, what if you missed? You know, you're fine. Commercial, right? I mean. Commercial. Have you ever All have commercial. you ever have you ever missed a flight where you're like, oh, man, we can't get to that flight. The game went 14 innings. I've never missed a flight. Um, really? <laughs> never. <laughs> 34 years. Never missed. I mean, there have been times when I say, OK, we're scheduled at 530 and a Sunday game goes into goes to 730 at night and there's right. no flights. Right. So we get up at four in the morning next day and then we're there in plenty of plenty of time. But um, we. We always, always get where we're going. Wow. Wait, can I mean, I've been in Pittsburgh, Sean, and they had a real bad uh, storm. They, they cut the flight once, and I'm like, what do I do? Do I run, gamble, and wait? Hopefully, they're going to take off. I went down, rented a car, and drove to Philadelphia. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. What you got to do to get there? Wait, yeah. is it and true? I got there, got there at five o'clock, threw my stuff in the room, and left for the ballpark. <laughs> That's awesome. The last two innings of that Fine. Sunday afternoon game, the four p.m. game, is it mm -hmm. true? Can you debunk or debunk this? The last three innings of the game, you better swing the bat because we're getting the hell out of here. Is that did Never. that happen back then? No, it, no, no. That's good no. to know. Never, never. You always and, hear and the honestly, announcers say that. Spring training, I would do the same thing. If Sean Casey, your star, was up, I would give him the same strike zone that, you know, late in the game they'll put young kids in. Yeah. You know, it might be his first big league bat in spring training ever. And, you know, I want to get out of there. I want to go home and see the kids. I want to go play golf. But I would never, ever change my strike zone. Wow. So George Brett would get the same strike zone <laughs> that some kid coming up from the camp that they yeah, stuck in the ninth that's inning. That's why you're the best ever. No, I mean, that's – I, I'm my <laughs> children. I'm my family. That's the truth. Never. Hirsch, who were the toughest fans, bro? Sean, you really don't hear them. And yeah. if you ever acknowledge that they're there, now, if they're being <laughs> friendly and nice, I'll be, you know, I'll take, I'll see, and I'll take a ball over to a kid or, you know, wh whatever. But um, if they're calling you and they're calling you because they're not liking you that day, don't ever look at them or acknowledge that you hear them. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. the kiss of death. Bro, I learned that. I learned that in my career early. We, I was struggling. I, I gotten hurt. I came back. We were in Shea Stadium. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm three weeks in the league. I'm hitting a buck fifty. I'm terrible. I, I'm, you thought you were going to go over there and maybe go have pasta at someone's house after, right? I thought I'm like, hey, this is great. We're in New York. It's going to be a great time. And I remember, oh I'm yeah, at I'm at first base and these fans are yelling, Casey, you suck. You're not even hitting your weight. You're, a, you're hitting a buck fifty. You're, you're seventy points below your weight. And I'm like, and I was like. And I was kind of like, oh, that's funny. And I looked that's over cute. and they go, he looked. And yeah. these freaking guys, these <laughs> guys <laughs> rode me for three days, Hirsch. I go, oh, yeah. I go, that was one thing I didn't learn in the big things the hard way. Never yeah. acknowledge when people yeah. ride you, never even give them mm -mm. acknowledge. <laughs> Make like you're dumber than all. <laughs> Just <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> so true. Little tricks right. of the trade, right? Little tricks of the trade. Yeah, you learn. Yeah. You can't. You can't teach experience, bro. You know what I mean? You no, can't teach experience. No, you, know I mean? no, you got to. You got to. You got to go through it. Hurst, yeah. the last thing we do on the show is we do a thing called nine and ninety. Chinch asks asks us nine questions, and then I'll answer first, and then you answer. Just kind of a fun thing. How we? Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll, like I'll do my best. <laughs> no, you're gonna be great. I know you're gonna be great. Right, I then. cannot wait for the last question. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> okay. Hall of Fame baseball broadcaster Marty Brenneman here. It's time for 9 in 90, the most ridiculous segment in all of sports. Let's yeah. start slow. Very easy. Cheetos, Doritos, or Fritos, Sean? Oh, you know what? I'm a Cheetos guy. I just, I love Cheetos. <laughs> okay. Cheetos, but I hate getting the yellow on my uh, <laughs> fingers. That stays there for like three days. All right, good. See Denise, you. Denise, Denise is like, John, quit wiping it on your yeah, back. Oh, not in the house. God forbid. <laughs> See, you're already off. Good, good start. All right, let's take it out of umpiring and go to refereeing. 
Casey, would you rather be an NBA ref or a boxing ref? I think a boxing ref would be better because I don't have to run as much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. How much you got? <laughs> for me, for me, it's definitely boxing. Nice. It's definitely boxing. Yeah, awesome. I like boxing, and I, I, I think, I think that'd be cool. All right, fun, great. All right, funnier movie. This is really difficult for me. Naked Gun or Airplane, Sean? Uh, you know what? I think Airplane was just such a good movie uh, with the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and, you know, flying the plane. And uh, just uh, it was just so inappropriate now. I don't even know if they All can right. play it on air nowadays. So, uh, airplane That's true. Was, That's you know, true. And I would definitely, yeah. I'm with Sean again. I say Airplane. Yeah. I mean, so good. I, I laughed my ass off when I see, <laughs> see that movie. Now they want, oh. now, no, Hirsch, nowadays, bro, they want to cancel everything. They probably, that's probably a movie they'd be yeah. like, no, you can't yeah, play I'm that. Sure. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, God. which of these Johns, Sean, is your favorite? You got John Cusack, John Krasinski from The Office, John Stamos, or John Goodman? Uh, I'm a big John Goodman fan, man. I don't know. I just I just like the big guys. You know, John Goodman's probably the guy I like the best there. Yeah. What do you got? This is All right, I'm going to disagree one time, only because I always hear my wife and my girl talk about John Stamos. Oh, forget <laughs> so, right. right. I couldn't tell you if you put a lineup up here right now. I couldn't tell you, but I do know that name from here yeah. from them. Yes, the ladies do. Like although, it. although Cusack in the '80s, you know, Better Off Dead and all those movies, I was pretty, yeah. pretty good too. Pretty good. <laughs> all right, similar vein in honor of the Hirschbeck brothers. Pick your favorite of these brothers, Sean: the Isley brothers, the Everly brothers, the Jonas brothers, or the Almond brothers. Oh, bro, the Almond Brothers. I still, I got the Almond Brothers going in the morning. My, I'm getting my daughters ready for school. We got, you know, the Almond Brothers playing. They're like, turn it off, Dad. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> I, I also, I was in college and high school in the '70s. I'll go Almond Brothers. Oh, that's yes. so great. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. I was in high school. And also, night. also the Greg Alman band when he went alone is yep. a great one. Exactly. And you I'm could, uh, no angel. You could sneak up. No when I was in high school, you could you could sneak <laughs> beers. Talk about how times have changed. Me and my friends from Long Island, we used to take book bags and we'd fill them full of cases of beer, warm beer, and we would go to the Beacon Theater and watch the Omen Brothers. And they never checked your bags and they never checked your IDs. Times anyway. have changed. Yeah, they hey, Sean, have. Remember Tim McClellan? I was oh yeah, that story. Love there, Tim. There's a mall right near us, and the movie theaters closed. But I said, you know what, Denise? Years and years. I think we were in our last minor league spring training here in Sarasota, but the Royals were here. Right. And I said. Me and Tim, I can't remember who else was there, but we purposely wore long pants that night and high socks, like from from san sanitary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we stuffed our pants with beers <laughs> in the sanitary. Yeah. Went into the movie theater. That's awesome. Oh yeah, beers in the movie. So that great. Was great. That's yeah. so great. Now that now they frisk you. you yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You, you sure you're right. American you're ingenuity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're at a casino, Sean. Blackjack table, roulette table. Hold them table, or are you at the slots? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm at the blackjack table, and then like an idiot, I go to the roulette table on the way out, I put it on black, see what happens, and I either double my money or I'm, I'm broke. Okay. I'm not a big gambler, but um, when we were in Puerto Rico in winter ball, I used to, I used to play um, blackjack a lot. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. That was fun. I like that. I would say blackjack. All right. Big uh, golf fan here. Sean, you first. Tiger Woods in his prime versus Jack in his prime. They play the Masters one on one. Who wins at the end of the week? Oh wow! Oh uh, man! Uh, I, I guess I'd have to say Tiger, just because during that time I just thought he was like. Un I mean, oh, Jack's unbelievable, but Tiger during that time growing up, he was unbelievable. And we're talking prime. Now, yeah. the only problem, I'm going to have to say Tiger, because I don't know other than from what I've heard and watching golf that Jack was is one of the greatest if not the greatest but the only reason i'll say tiger is that i've watched him since he came yeah. to the tour yeah see more cutthroat too in his prime too right <clears throat> yeah uh, all right this uh jack was pretty serious yeah though. yeah he's he really yeah. <laughs> yeah he's pretty serious <laughs> nice. yeah jack was cutthroat too yeah okay this is the last one i've been excited for this one you guys are going to role play a little Shh, right. this is again back in the day sean casey's up with the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth down one Full count. Pitch comes in. It's two. Who's the pitcher? Who's the pitcher? Let's <laughs> go. Hey, you pick Case. Pick a pitcher. Let's go. Uh, That's all right. Okay. No, let's That's go Randy. Right. Randy Johnson, lefty, lefty, and he's battles. Full. Oh, it's getting geez, worse. Sean. It's getting worse. Slider Please. comes. It's two inches outside, Sean. Go. 
He calls a strike, pick, by the way. He calls strike three. Hurst, Hurst calls a strike? Yes. So I called him out? You called him strike three. The ball, Sean thinks strike it's two three? inches outside. You think it's on so a corner. Two inches. Go. Is that, that two inches? Yes, that's sir. It? Yeah. And that's Randy Johnson coming from the left side over here? <laughs> yeah. Let me role play first. Hey, right. Case, I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> Don't forget, he's coming from the left That's side, true. right across the plate, and ends up there. Did you guys ever argue? Case. Did you guys ever argue? And if no. it, if it no. no, we, I, if we did, did, I don't think we if never he did. Yeah. He, it, it would be like I'd be scarred. So, I would, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, hey, Sean, real. If you have time, real quick, yeah. John. What's John's last name? Small guy. I know you know him from Cleveland. He was a utility player. Oh, Cleveland. John McDonald. John McDonald. John McDonald. Okay, yeah, Johnny Mac. Johnny Mac. One of the nicest people Greatest. ever in the game, right? And ever. the ultimate compliment, I would think, before my daughters got married or whatever, I, I'd say if my daughter brought <laughs> home a man like him, I'd be very happy. Yeah. yeah. And um, that used to hurt me to call strikes on him. <laughs> that used to really cut me deep. I, I I swear to God, that would cut me deep. Oh my God, that is so great. That is so great. You know what's funny about Johnny McDo Johnny Mac? I think when Roberto Clemente, I mean when when Roberto Alomar went into the Hall of Fame, they asked him who the best shortstop he ever ever played with was, and he said John McDonald. He said, John, hey, so uh, when you were calling strikes on him, Hirsch, he was like, what the hell? I got to try to get make plays out there. Without don't Mark. worry. <laughs> don't worry. I was under underhanded given given saying I didn't call many strikes on him. I just didn't do it. Oh, that's so <laughs> great, Hirsch. What well, Hirsch, great Hirsch, how can we um, your magic of Michael Foundation? Can you how can we how can we get get it out to our fans? Just how they can people will go to our donate. website. And yeah, what's uh, the yeah. website? What's the website? www.magicofmichael.com. MagicofMichael.com. You'll see, you'll see everything from there's some stories, and I would encourage people to read the one, uh, the umpire's sons, that I did after Robbie. We had the spitting incident, but it's not yeah. about. It was written by the girl that wrote it, won the Pulitzer Prize for it. Right. And then there's another good one, um, uh, John Hirschbeck's survival guide, and they'll know about my family and everything that's going on with both the boys dying and. Right. Um, but it'll tell it, it's got pictures and everything that things that we've done with the magical Michael. It shows pictures of the kids when we've given them uh, dogs, assistant dogs and wheelchairs. And they'll have fun looking at it anyway. Oh, man, it's great. You guys are doing great things in honor of Michael, because I know his his spirit lives, lives with you guys and lives with me to this day. You know, everyone go check that out. Donate to help the kids. It's a wonderful cause. And Michael was a wonderful spirit. So grateful he was in my life, brother. Hirsch, I'm grateful you're in my life. I'm so you know, looking forward to seeing you soon, man. I can't thank you enough will. for coming When we get back us. from Florida, I'm going to call you. you got to come up and uh, yeah. come to the house. You don't golf, but you like to fish? Yeah, uh, yeah, I love to fish, dude. I, and <laughs> okay, I, and, I'm, and I'm trying to like the golf. I'm just so horse shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I know, I'm it's hard. To, you know, but I'm trying to get better, bro. I'm trying to we'll get, get better. To, we'll get together soon. And uh, you guys, I think, have, have a real good show. And Kate, just like I said, I love you, buddy. And thanks wow. for having me on. It's been my honor. I love you too, Hirsch. And tell Denise I said hello. Hopefully you guys have a great time in Florida. And I will see you soon, man. Thank you so much for doing this for us. You got it, guys. Chinch, that I told you. I told you, you man. Did. I, I, I was for months now. I'm like, we got to get Hirsch on. We got to get Hirsch back on. Like, I'll be like, but to see the game from an uh, umpire's eyes, it's part of the game. Right. You got you got the defense, offense, but the umpires are part of the game. That's why I don't love the robo umps and that with the electronic strikes and they're talking about like let the human error still be part of the game these guys are the best dude these right. guys are the best in the business and you go look at the calls everyone wants to talk about the calls they miss they're getting 97 percent of these calls right like go right. look at the the numbers are phenomenal right with the these. balls go stand in a uh, batter's box and call us actually go behind a home plate one day of your high school kids game and try to call one batter and you will know huh. that is not easy there's i loved i loved by the way when he was talking about his eye line and umpiring and how he had to do his job well and you said you said it yourself like so many parallels to being a hitter and identifying yes. the pitch it's pretty so much many. the same a lot of the same mechanics go into it mentally and visually and i love how Big he time. said take a beat before you make the call that's so yes. cool so i like cool, that man. i like that you know i think the biggest thing too as a hitter and an umpire you're waiting for that last tick to decide what you're doing. Am I swinging? Am I not swinging? And the same thing with an umpire. Boy, was that, did that hit the corner? Did it not hit the corner? Right. What, you know, 
did it slide when it should have slid? I just think it's so cool to hear it from his point of view. Right. And one last thing, am I on sim- similar fashion? You guys, we did that last thing as a gag. Like, I'm like, Sean Casey's up, you're behind the plate, whatever. And he went into detail, the same way you go into detail going, wait, hold on, if the ball's in, I'm going to do this. And you have your checklist right. of being a professional baseball player at a high level that you were, that you think about things at a higher level. He, how about he was like, in the gag, he goes, who's pitching? Is it a slider, fastball? What's the count? <laughs> what did you do? Right. Like, he, right. he has a next level approach to it, which makes him, like you said, it's, it's really awesome yeah. that you told him to his face. You think he's the greatest umpire of all time? I think he's the greatest umpire of all time. I think a lot of guys would agree with that. A lot of guys would Great. agree with John Hirschback, but one of the greatest of oh, all time. That was awesome. And one of the great, for me, the greatest, I mean, like I said, the relationship I had with Hirsch all those years started at first base, talking yeah. to him, getting to know him. And it's funny true professional. Like I was never in the dish saying, even though we have a great relationship, this guy's not giving me a pitch. He's doing his yeah. job. Just like I got to do my job. Mm-hmm. Ball comes across the plate. I got to hammer it. He gets a pitch on the corners. Has to ring me up. He's going to ring me up. Right. You know what I mean? So right. I, I always respected that. So great, man. Good job with that. Yeah. Great so, call on getting him on here. Yeah. yeah. Awesome chance, man. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And like I said, bro, we're, uh, I appreciate everyone listening. Keep listening to us. Tell your friends, email somebody, pass it on, like, subscribe, right? All that. All yes. that stuff, Chinch, right? Download. Let's go. Spotify, <laughs> Apple, iHeart, wherever yeah. you can do it. Let's go. We right. need you. Yes. We need you. And we're thankful. So stay grateful, brother. Have a great day. And I'll, I'll see you next week, man. Chinch, support this week for the mayor's office is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0, baby. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code the mayor at manscaped.com. I tell you what, though, I love these things, Chinch. I've had them. I've had Manscaped 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and this is the 4.0. This one it has a new sleek design. It's perfect for guys like me, though, dude. I'm one of the hairiest guys going. That's a fact. And for- and as the fact, and forever, man, forever, I've been looking for the best trimmers. Even going way back years of when I was playing, I'd always nick myself up, cut myself as the worst. These trimmers right here, man, they are the best. They are the absolute best. Trims up my back, trims up my arm, the jewels, whatever it takes. Yeah. But this trimmer is the absolute best, the 4.0, the lawnmower from Manscaped. I can vouch for that. I know Sean wears a sweater 24 hours a day, <laughs> 365 days a year, and he needs this. He sent me one. I'm so psyched. I shave with it. That's how good got, it is. That's how yeah, and it is. Chinch, I've tried every every one you could try, every clipper you could possibly buy, I've tried. Yeah. This by far is the best. Yeah, Sean puts the a best. clipper on his it, – it'll break the clippers, but not the manscaper. Yeah. So every what every one. Everyone should have this, bro. Everyone yeah, well, should have one of these. They absolutely should. So here's how you get it, okay? You get 20% off and free shipping with the code the mayor, right, Sean? The mayor? Yes. At manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com, and use the code the mayor. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped, and you can look as clean as Casey does now. When he, <laughs> when he doesn't use a Manscaped, it's like Sasquatch. There's the, the people call it cops. Unbelievable. Lawnmower 4.0. Go get it. It's unbelievable, Chinch. <laughs> Do it.